Hello again. Welcome to the Antiques Hunter channel. I'm Rez and like always I'm filming here at the Antique Storehouse, the place where everything is possible and where you can see the most amazing things you ever imagined. Today I'll show you a very special item, something that it's a first for me as well and uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. But before that I would like to thank you all for watching this show, sharing it and um, just letting me know about your uh, suggestion or your interest. I'll try to do everything possible to actually uh, answer all your uh, questions and answer your curiosity and try to make this as fun as possible. Today I had the plan to, my plan was to actually do something a bit different. I was thinking to go back to some films and bust some films. Um, that's on my table, it's on my list, so just be patient. Um, but before that, well, just by happening, I managed to get my hands on a very special item and you won't see many of these. So I'll make the long story short, think about it this way. We are in Paris in the 1870s, probably just after the Prussian Franco War of 1870-1871 where the French were kicked. So the fr France is uh, in a bit of a disarray, <clears throat> the Napoleon III is just losing his throne, um, France is becoming a republic again. And Paris, well Paris, the city of lights, is not the safest place to be. And uh, in Paris there were some gangs, uh, well like pretty much anywhere else in big cities, but these gangs were meaner than most of the other ones you'll find. They were actually called the Apaches, <laughs> referring to the American Indians, na native Indians, which are very dangerous. And uh, the favorite wep weapon of the Apache gang in uh, Paris was this. This, it's a knuckle duster. Well, it's not an usual knuckle duster. You, it looks funny. Yes, I know, it does. They used weapons like these, which could be easily concealed to actually rob people on the street or kill people for money or stuff like that. This is a very interesting piece because uh, there's not many around. Uh, this is the second pattern, so probably this one is produced at around 1880s and quite a lot of them actually found their way into the uh, trenches of the First World War. So as you can see, well, this is a piece it's a, a, a weapon used to punch people. Well, if that wasn't enough, then, well, you punch the guy, maybe you didn't kill him or so. So you want to make sure. So if you want to make sure that he's dead, well, you take a knife out and you stab the poor blog. And if that isn't enough either, well, you have a double action revolver, six... Uh, 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 rounds in 32 caliber it's more like it's a six millimeter weapon so it's yeah it is equivalent with the 32 caliber and well the, the poor bastard doesn't have a chance as said quite a lot of them found their way into the trenches of the first world war before the proper knuckle dusters were used the, the <clears throat> some knuckle dusters made of brass which are a bit more solid than this piece, well, if this is not solid enough. Um, and eventually you have knuckle dusters with a proper knife on the other end. But to come back to our piece here, well, the first patterns of these were made partially from brass, partially from steel, or if you're a rich uh, chap, then you will get one with silver inlays on it. And uh, the first version of, of this would use a uh, different kind of uh, revolver so cuz because this is a this is a double action center fire well the first first uh, ones that were made probably around 200 and something probably 250 of them um were made with a, a different system it was um, a rim fire revolver so basically the cartridge was uh, in a, a bit different and uh, I won't get into details of that maybe we'll get to the ammunition at one point um to be able to fold this again, by the way, you just push this 
bottom and it goes back and yeah when the center fire cartridges started to uh, become popular then they changed this into a center fire piece and made uh, all of it of steel because it's a very solid weapon to reload the, the cylinder you actually you use this trap door here so that will allow you to load the cartridges and your question will be well yes okay that's how you load but what about um, taking the cases, the use cases out, because there's no extractor or something like that, because you can't remove the cylinder. Well, they thought of that, and actually they <clears throat> made this rod, which screws into a hole there. So you basically, you push the, the empty cases out with this rod, and after you've done that, you just reload again. You'll say, this is not a, a fast process. No, it isn't, but the whole point is that you don't use this as a, a revolver necessarily you just use it when you need it so you don't shoot <clears throat> rounds after rounds after rounds the whole point is that you have six six shots which you will use um, in one fight or something and uh, after they are depleted you usually run away with the money of the owner or something so yeah this this is a very rare piece uh, this is a uh, serial number 23 of the second issue I don't know how many of these were made, but uh, we know that the first series were about made between 200 and 250. So probably this would be the, <clears throat> pretty much the same. So this is one of the early, early pieces. Um, it is stamped with the manufacturer uh, uh, mark here. It's a guy called uh, J. Della X. Uh, I'm not very good at French, so... <clears throat> You make it up for yourself. Thank you for watching. I hope this was interesting. Um, I'll definitely go back to my regular subjects, but this this was this was a, a unique piece, and I had to show it to you because um, it, it basically is the ancestor of all the modern knuckle dusters still used today on the ba battlefields, and uh, it is a very um, useful military weapon but also it can be very mean in the hands of uh, uh, street gangs and stuff like that in um, uh, england for example they are banned they are considered to be uh, lethal weapons so you to own uh, something like this which is uh, uh, not considered an antique this is an antique you need a license if it's an antique piece like this then this is a highly collectible item you won't use it on the street because on the antiques market this is about it's between three and a half and four thousand pounds so this is more valuable in one piece thank you for watching please share and like um, and um, spread the word to your friends and I'll, I'll definitely wait for your suggestions about uh, more interesting items that i can show um, in this um, on this channel thank you so much and i'll see you next time bye